All right, so we're kicking off here tonight with We Are Two with Jim and Crystal. Uh, and Jim is going to actually go over uh, a passage from Psalms tonight. Uh, and so I'm excited to listen and hear what he has to say. Uh, I want to let you guys know it's exciting news. We are going to do another in-person conference, sort of. It's not really a conference. It is an advanced spiritual warfare training workshop that will be held basically in Louisville, Kentucky. We just have to go 10 minutes away to uh, Jeffersonville, Indiana at David Heavener's church, which is an amazing church. I mean, it's like built in the 1800s. It's, it's just, it's, Jeannie saw pictures of it today and it is truly uh, something else. And so we're going to gather there and we're going to do a, uh, on Sunday, uh, it is October 14, 15, and 16. And we are going to do on Sunday, uh, the 16th in the afternoon, a trip, an excursion out to the replica of the ark that was built in, Jeannie, you're muted. It's called the Ark Encounter, and we're going to provide transportation. And for those of you who want to go see the Ark, we're going to have a little, yeah, a little road trip on the uh, on a bus, and it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see it. That's awesome. Now, someone <laughs> just put, "Will it be online?" I'm in process of moving my dad from Ohio to Florida and can't go. Yes. It will the ever Not live it won't be live though it won't be live it'll be video on demand so we'll upload everything each day uh, or should i say the incredible technical staff that we're taking with us will do that which is going crystal of jim woodcock <laughs> That's you. Uh, oh that was you yeah right the two of them <laughs> uh, so uh, you want to go to our website or see the uh, email I sent out today. Get your tickets early for this one, guys. Uh, there's a luncheon on Saturday. It's a casual thing. Uh, and, and I got to tell you, it's going to fill up quick because David's church is small. When we did, so The whole thing is dedicated in loving memory to Russ Dizdar, uh, who died on October... 17th of last year and so we're going to be praying for us and we'll play a tribute to him there and I, i've got to tell you it's going to fill up quick and once it's full it's full i mean there's no overflow there's no extra stuff uh there are hotels within eight blocks away Jeannie, what were those hotels oh you put me on the spot um radisson windham sheraton Fairfield in Hilton and Holiday Inn Express. Yeah, and we're gathering, we're gathering information about these hotels and trying to see if we can get some discounted rates. So there's Those plenty are, of hotels nearby and there's great restaurants within a few blocks of the venues. So we're going to have a great time and we're going to take a deep dive into spiritual warfare and get you guys trained up and, and ready for battle. It's what continue. you guys have all asked us to do. And so we're doing it. So I'm asking you to come. Uh, you know, it's the price of gas nationally is dropping quickly to under four a gallon. Uh, airplane tickets are dropping like incredibly fast. Uh, you can fly into Louisville. Louisville is only 10 minutes away. 15, 15. according to Dave. 15 okay. minutes. And, and, he, and David said, it's about a fifteen to twenty dollar Uber ride from the airport to the venue or to the local hotels in um, Jeffersonville, Indiana. And you know the 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 other thing is, if you choose to stay in Louisville, it's a short you know and rent a car or something like that, or you're driving out. <clears throat> it's just you just go over the bridge on the river there, and you're at David's. Uh, uh, facility. So uh, I'll have pictures of his church up on the website. We'll have links to the hotels. We'll do our best to get discounted rates for everybody. 
Uh, but this is where here the watchman is going, doing these, these sort of gatherings where people can get tangible and tactical information about what they can do to prepare and save their family from the days ahead. Smaller mm -hmm. than like the big giant ones, which I don't want to do anymore. Uh, and, and it's just going to be much more impactful. Speakers are right now, L.A. Marzulli, uh, help me out here, Jeannie, L.A. Marzulli. Uh, Eric Gilbert, Sharon Gilbert. Eric, Sharon, Gilbert. Uh, Tom Dunn, Vicky Tom Joy. Tom Dunn, Vicky Tom Joy, Dunn. Sonda, and dun, 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 who else? Who's well, on this call right now? Sonda. Tracy, uh, Tracy Tennant. Tracy Tennant's going to be a speaker. And Tracy has an off the hook book on spiritual warfare. So uh, she'll be there. Vicki Joy Anderson will be there. Uh, LA is publishing her book. Uh, Sonda edited LA's book. So it's gonna be a big family event of people who really know what's going on. <laughs> and, and so uh, we wanna see you guys all out there. And, and on that note, uh, I am starting a new show with Jim's help uh, that will air every Friday and Monday. And I think I'll release it at like 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, that's called What's Going On. What's going on? What's really going on out there in the world. The things you need to look at, the mainstream media stories, the alternative media stories, and to try and bring everything back into a biblical perspective on what it is you need to do to survive this like insanity that's going on right now. So I'm gonna stop talking there. I burned up like 15 minutes. So Jim, you can go 15 minutes over. Uh, let's, uh, let's turn it over to Jim and Crystal. Outstanding. So let's go ahead and pray. Alvino Mahino, our father and king, we just thank you and we just praise you. You are such a great God. You're such an awesome God. And so, Lord, I just thank you that uh, we have opportunities uh, to grow closer to each other as we grow closer to you. And uh, Lord, I just thank you that we have this platform. I uh, thank you that you've blessed us with Mike and Jeannie, uh, just awesome family that uh, uh, Lord just wants to uh, see people come closer to you. So we pray blessings for Mike and Jeannie tonight. And uh, we just ask that you just continue to lift them up and continue to use them for the advancement of your kingdom. Also, Lord, just uh, as we look in your word tonight and as we praise you, uh, just open up our hearts to the things of you. And uh, Lord, I just ask that uh, you just put your anointing upon us so that we can just ooze uh, the goodness and the greatness of you. So we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So um, I would like to... Jim, Jim. Yeah, we're not even showing up. I just want everyone to know, on Thursday nights, we do not do questions and answers. Okay, if you want to ask Jim a question about what he's preaching on tonight, where do they find you, Jim? That would be at rabsterproductions at gmail.com. That's rabsterproductions at gmail.com. All right, take it away. Cool. Here we go. And we do apologize if you got a little glitch tonight, but uh, you know what? We're going to work through it, and God is good. So uh, let's give him praise. From the dawn, from the dawn of creation, this world has been crying out for hope, for a hero to save us. We long for the supernatural. There is only one God who can save the day. So clear the stage, prepare the way. Heaven and earth are singing. Glory, hallelujah, let the whole world see the greatness of our God. In awesome wonder, He reigns forever. We know the greatness of our God. His power is in us, He lives within us. We know the greatness of our God. of our God. 
the greatness of our God. There's no one above him. There's no one above him. Only our Savior wears the crown. There's none who can stop him. Not even the grave could hold him down. There is only one king who can save the day. So clear the stage, prepare the way. Heaven and earth are singing. Glory, hallelujah. Let the whole world see the greatness of our God. There are some wonder. He reigns forever. We know the greatness of our God. His power is endless. He lives within us. We know the greatness of our God. The greatness of our God. The greatness of our God. We stand in awe. We stand in awe and wonder, all the honor is yours. We stand in awe and wonder, all the honor is yours. We stand in awe and wonder, all the honor is yours. We stand in awe and wonder, Oh, and wonder the greatness of our God. In awesome wonder, He reigns forever. We know the greatness of our God. His power is endless. He lives within us. We know the greatness of our God. In awesome wonder, He reigns forever. We know the greatness of our God, His power is endless, He lives within us, we know the greatness of our God, the greatness of our God, the greatness of our God. Stand in awe and wonder, all the honor is yours. We stand in awe and wonder, all the honor is yours. We stand in awe and wonder, all the honor is yours. Thank you, Jesus. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's give him praise and lift our hands to the heaven. We are your church. We are your church. We are your sons and daughters, we've gathered here to meet with you. We lift our eyes, we lay our hearts before you, expectant here for you to With our hands to the heavens and in your presence, oh God, when you come, so pour out your spirit, we love to be near you, oh God, when 
our prayer, Lord, that you have your way with us. Have your way with us, Lord. Have your way with us, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Make that your prayer. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. so worthy. We praise you, Jesus, as you have your way with us. We sing to you the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Sing worthy is the Lamb.
to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I that you are and all that you do for us. That you are holy, that you are worthy of praise, worthy to be adored, and that your name is above all other names. We just thank you so much that you allow us to lift that name up. our lips. Lord, set us apart from the world. Set us apart from all that is unholy so that we can draw closer and closer to you, Lord. We ask that tonight, as we read your word, as we study what your word says, God, that we would learn more about who you are and be able to draw closer in that intimate relationship that you would have for us. We ask it all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's pray again. Lord, I just ask as we just open up your words, Lord, I just ask that... Uh, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So, Lord, we just love you. And, uh, Lord, we just ask that you, uh, well, you are the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And uh, so with that, Lord, we just ask that you just, uh, you just pour it out. Pour it out tonight from your word. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Well, if you have hey, your Bible. Hey, Jim. All right. Yes, sir. So I get to introduce you, and I want, I, you know, I mean, we all know I'm deaf, uh, but uh, I hope everybody can hear you. Talk into the microphone when you're preaching check, 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 uh, check. so I can hear you. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, guys, you got to understand, we met Jim and Crystal at the conference we did in San Diego, which was beautiful. It was a wonderful conference one of the best we've ever put on and uh, it's available online people have been purchasing it like crazy right now online on demand uh, so if you don't have it avail yourself of that uh, but so i'm at the registration desk sitting there and this couple like is wandering around in the foyer and and they come up and start talking to me and uh, then he, he told me that he played guitar and he was wandering around strumming his guitar. And I was like, yeah, the guy can play guitar. And uh, he, I asked him, I said, would you mind uh, playing your guitar uh, down at the wall and then uh, uh, at the uh, baptisms? Because we were at this place uh, that was a Christian uh, themed hotel. And he was like, yeah, sure. 
And so he did it. Well, then a couple of weeks later, he calls me and says, I think we're going to move to Sam. I want to come up and visit. And I'm like, all right, come on up to the house. Let's take a look. And they found a house up here, a beautiful home on 20 acres. Uh, and now he's up here helping here the watchman and Crystal's helping here the watchman uh, and John Jubilee, who they met at the San Diego conference. Uh, and uh, uh, they're helping out and they're doing, they're doing a great job. You know, I mean, it's, it's been a journey. Uh, and so uh, I'm really honored to give Jim and Crystal and the whole Woodcock family a platform here to bless all of you with what they know. Jim is an ordained pastor and a messianic rabbi. Uh, I love everything about him but I don't understand the kosher stuff, but that's okay. You know, I've, I made them chicken and a chicken and cheese casserole thing the first time I came over and they ate the whole thing. And then later said to me, well, we're really not supposed to have cheese with chicken. And I was like, sorry, uh, but uh, uh, Jim and I have become very close. He's helping me daily uh, here at, at Hear the Watchman. Uh, so Jim, take it away. Amen. Thanks, Mike. And uh, I have to say that, uh, you know, we just love it here. We love that we're getting to be close to Mike and Jeannie. And, uh, you know, God's got a great thing coming. So uh, and just a little side note, make sure that you continue to keep here the watchman in prayer because God isn't done with us yet. And uh, so it was really neat to see how uh, God has given uh, Mike the vision of where we should be going and Jeannie the vision of where we should be going. And uh, uh, with that, it's kind of an exciting ride. It's uh, it's never boring around here, <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, we just love serving with Mike and Jeannie. So just remember to, to keep them in your prayers. So anyhow, let's kind of transition over here uh, um, to something that uh, we got going on where um, I, if you got your Bibles with you and uh, you can't hear me. OK, so uh, let me turn this thing up even more. Uh, how about now? Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yes, no, maybe so. Or is it better if I just talk into this microphone? Can you hear me better on this microphone? Yeah, Carol Lewis is like, oh, yeah, that's better. Okay, here, let's do this. You sound good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. All right, so uh, we're going to get this on presenter view here. So speaker view, good. Okay, so we're good to go. All right, so uh, if you have your Bibles, let's uh, turn to Psalm 100, please. And, uh, um, and uh, or I'm sorry, did I say Psalm 100? That's make a joyful noise, which is what we should be doing when we are, um, uh, you know, what we should be doing when we're singing to the Lord. But uh, with that, let's look at Psalm chapter one. And when Mike said, hey, Jim, I want you to do something from Psalms. I'm like, oh, oh great. I already know what Psalm I'm going to teach on. It's going to be Psalm chapter one. I've already got my notes prepared. I'm already ready to go on that. And of course, then I realized, oh, no, I'm rendering a video. And for if you've done video work, it takes sometimes days to render videos. I'm like, oh, OK, well, hey, praise God, because you know what? The Holy Spirit is going to bring all things to remembrance. And that's one thing that we all need to remember is that, you know, we, when we read the Bible, when we look at God's word, when we say, hey, I'm going to take time daily to uh, listen to the Lord, his word does not return void. He always gives us an opportunity to share uh, what we've been reading, and he will bring all these verses back to remember it. So let me encourage you, if you have not read the Bible from cover to cover yet, do it. I don't care if it takes you five years. God doesn't care if it takes you five years. Just as you're reading his word, he can use that daily. And so uh, with that, let's look at the word of God and uh, Lord bless the reading of your word. But Psalms chapter one says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the, sorns, of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does will prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the God ungodly shall perish. And so uh, once again, Father, just bless the reading of your word and speak to us through your word. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 
So isn't it interesting here, you know, how we see this, uh, uh, this, this comparing and this contrasting between the person. And when we see law in our scripture many times, and I know that it is here too as well, um, that is the word Torah. Uh, tor Torah is something that we feed from. I've got a Torah scroll right behind me over here. That is the first five books of the Bible. And so, you know, with that, remember, it's not as much law as it's something that, you know, it's our daily bread. It's the word. It's something that we need to feast upon. It's something that we need to learn from. And so uh, with that, when we delight in God's word, mighty things will happen. And we're blessed. We are blessed if we don't walk with those who are ungodly. And I believe that that's how the emergent church has gotten started. Too many people said, well, how are we going to reach the world? Well, let's try this methodology that's worldly. Let's try this philosophy uh, that comes from the world. And, and that way we can relate to people. So they start walking in ways that are not of God. And then the next thing you know, uh, they're, you're walking along. Okay. And then the next thing you know, they're standing. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to stand up with these people. They seem nice. You know, people from our other religions, many of them are nice. Yeah. So I'm going to stand here and I'm just going to, you know, hang out with them. And then we sit with them. And uh, that is really where we go later to see. And when you sit with somebody, we got to understand that fellowship, uh, you know, spending time with people, breaking bread with people, eating with people in Judaism. Uh, one thing, you know, I've learned from, from my Hebrew studies is that when you eat with someone, that is the highest form of fellowship that you can have with them. And when Yeshua Jesus is saying in Revelation 20 to the Laodicean church, hey, I'm outside the door knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will dine with him. I will fellowship with him. I will have that intimate relationship with him. And in fact, uh, you know, one thing that we were reminded of at base camp the, this last week was that, uh, you know, that fellowship, that time that we have together, the first thing that we're going to do when we see Yeshua Jesus is, you know, we're going to have a wedding feast. Wow. Jesus really wants to have fellowship with us. But yet, where if we as, you know, as believers are walking with people we shouldn't be walking with, are standing, hanging out with them, are sitting down with them, like, you know, God says, no, 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 you're not going to be blessed if you do that. But he wants us to, to, to be what? He wants us to, you know, what does uh, um, Hebrews 12 say? Run with patience, run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto who? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our, you know, of our faith. We're supposed to be running and running and running, and we keep going, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're running, we're running. Those who wait upon the Lord, he will renew our strength. We will mount up with wings as eagles. We will not walk and not be weary. We will run and not faint. Let's run, you know, um, speaking of running, I remember one time, uh, uh, you know, my school, like a lot of other schools, uh, needed to raise money. And uh, one of the things they had said, hey, we're going to have a jogathon. And uh, so, you know, I didn't know what that meant, but uh, okay, I like to run. So, you know what, uh, they encouraged us, you know, hey, have all these people, uh, you know, sponsor you for your jogathon so you can raise money for our school. And, you know, the coaches, the PE coaches, uh, you know, my kids call PE pointless exercise. I don't agree with that, but uh, just a little side note there. <laughs> but, the, you know, what they were doing is like, oh, hey, why don't you go out and run? And then just get a little bit better because, of course, they, you know, it's for your health and it's for your school and it's for our pockets and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So my dad takes me to the local high school track and he goes, okay, well, let's see what you can do. So I ran four laps at somewhere between eight and 10 minutes, did four laps. And he's like, oh, okay, pretty cool. You know, I'll just let your coach know. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go to Jogathon. Well, dad, how much is four laps? Oh, I don't know. I think it's a quarter mile, <laughs> maybe a half. Oh, thanks, dad. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, uh, the so little did I know that, uh, you know, I went to the Jogathon, I signed some people up, my dad's just like, oh, yeah, don't worry about the money, you know, Jim can only run like a quarter mile in like eight minutes or so. And out of ignorance, we had no idea what size that track was. Well, it turns out that I ran a mile in around eight minutes or so. And I did my first Jogathon, I want, I want to say between 30 and 32 laps in an hour. So that's quite a ways. <laughs> and there were a lot of people that were angry that I ran too much. <laughs> well, we don't want to pay that much money. But, uh, you know, but I think about, you know, that long distance running. 
And, you know, and really running with Jesus isn't a sprint. Running with the Lord isn't where we just like, boom, take off for a second. Oh, I'm done. No, it's an endurance race. And some things I've learned from endurance running is that there's a difference between injury and pain. Because when you beat your body that hard in a distance run, uh, there's a lot of pain that's involved, but there's not injury. And so, you know, just you, you, so for those of you who've done athletics, your coach will tell you to just push through it, just push through it, just push through it. But when we think about it spiritually, we've got some pain that's going on. In fact, right now, um, my least favorite book in the Bible, uh, at least the, the portion of the book that I'm in right now, is the book of Job. And, you know, right now I'm, you know, the shortest man in the Bible is there, Bildad, the shoe height, you know, he's just as tall as a shoe and he's given Job some really bad advice. And it's just like, oh, Job's sitting around with some guys who don't get it. He's not looking to Jesus. And in that walk and in that run and in our faith, there's going to be times of pain. There's going to be times of hurt. And we have to remember that Job did nothing wrong. You know, in fact, you, you know, Satan was uh, appearing before our, our father in heaven and, and he's just like, oh, and God's just like, oh, hey, have you considered my servant Job? Wow. There's none like him. You know, look at that guy down there. He's even, you know, making sacrifices for his kids just in case they sinned. Not that they had sinned, but he's making sacrifices just in case they blew it. What a righteous dude, you know? Yeah. And Satan is just like, oh, well, you know what? If you take away everything that he has, he's going to curse you and die. Because Job was a wealthy man. Was there pain in Job's walk? You bet. Job, all in one day, lost all his herds, all his wealth. His children were, you know, were killed. Yeah. And yet Job says, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And his wife was just like, oh, you know, I can hear her Jewish voice. Would you hurry up already and curse the Lord and die? You know, and. And with that, Job is like, oh, no, we got to be God. We've got to be faithful in the good times as well as faithful in the bad times. So Satan goes back up to heaven. And it's just like, oh, well, you know, it's just because you didn't hurt him physically. And God's like, I'll do what you want. Just don't kill him. And so Job had all these, you know, these boils and all this stuff going on. But yet he did not listen to his friends and their bad advice. Even though they were sitting down with him, just telling him stuff. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, there's a denial there. A lot of cults, uh, you know, like Jehovah's Witnesses, they use the book of Job to quote a bunch of scripture and they get a lot of their, uh, their practices from the book of Job. But when you read the book of Job, you have to read who is speaking. It's not God that's speaking in most of that book. It is Job's buddies giving him bad advice. And so that's why we don't sit down with these people. That's why we don't walk with these people. That's why we don't stand around these people and listen to their philosophies. In fact, the only thing that God wants us to do with these people is to share the good news. There is only one sin that keeps you out of heaven, and that sin is not having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ not confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You don't do that. That is the one sin that keeps you from heaven. Well, shall we go on sinning that grace may abound? What does the apostle Paul say? May it never be. God doesn't want us to just continue in our sin just because we're forgiven, right? Yeah, we have to delight in the Torah. We have to delight in the Ten Commandments. If the Holy Spirit wants you to delight in the other 603 commandments, that's between you and the Holy Spirit and nobody else. If the Holy Spirit says you need to keep kosher, keep kosher. If the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you to keep kosher, don't keep kosher. It's between you and the Lord. But I do know this, when we delight ourselves in making sure that we are keeping those Ten Commandments, and realizing that that's a testimony is keeping those commandments. And it's also a testimony when we blow it with other people, apologizing to them, might even bring them into the commandments. We delight in those things. God is going to prosper us. 
you know, it's not, you know, I'm tired of hearing these guys on TV. You know, if you send me $5,000, I'm going to pray a special prayer for you. And God's going to give you a yacht and a Ferrari and a mansion, just like I have. No, that's not how it works. We need to delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on God's word day and night. It's not just reading the word of God, but you know, and that's straight from, from uh, the book of Joshua, if I remember correctly, where it says that there is a special blessing for those who meditate on God's word day and night. There's also a special blessing for those who read the book of Revelation. I don't understand why a lot of people don't read the book of Revelation. Read it. I get why some people don't like to teach it because they, they're gonna be, there's going to be a lot of questions. In fact, Revelation is kind of like the capstone study of all of Scripture. You have to have a thorough understanding of the Torah. You have to have a thorough understanding of the Psalms. You got to have a thorough understanding of uh, the prophets, major and minor. Uh, you have to have an understanding of the Olivet Discourse. You have to have, it, you know, it's, it's all there. There's so many cross-references in the book of Revelation. No wonder it's a special blessing for those who read it. Because when you read it and when you study it, what are you going to do? You're going to find yourself searching throughout all of God's word and finding the answers that God wants you to have. And then you have that hope that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And what does he want? He wants to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You didn't sit around with those jokers. You didn't hang out with those people that were playing. You didn't, you know, spend your time going, well, you know, uh, if I learn their philosophy and I'm going to try to share the gospel using their philosophy, that doesn't work. We already know how to share the gospel. It's right here in God's book. It's right here. We've got it. The gospel's simple. It's easy. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You believe in your heart that God has raised him. You will be saved. There's no other name under heaven. No other name that someone can be saved except for the name of Jesus. Or you know what? You might speak Hebrew. You might call him Yeshua. You might speak Arabic. You might call him Yesu. Uh, you know, you know, it might call him Jesus Cristo in, in Spanish. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord in whatever tongue they speak, they will be saved. Not my words, God's words. Think about that for a moment. Yeah, and God wants us to daily work out our salvation in fear and trembling. What does that mean? That means that uh, we realize that Jesus died for us. We realize at what you know, cost he gave. God demonstrated his own love toward us. And yeah, you know, while we were sinners, Jesus died for us. You know, and uh, I love, uh, I think it's 2 Corinthians 5.15 that says, he died for us so that those of us who live should no longer live for ourselves. Catch that? Those of us who live should no longer live for ourselves, but for the one who died and rose again on our behalf. We need to, you know, that's what part of working on our salvation. We need to die to ourselves and say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to step out in faith today? You know, how do you want me to let my light shine so that this lost and dying world will see my good deeds and then give you all the glory for it? Because remember, it's not about us. It's all about him. It's all about the Lord. And so with that, let's look unto Jesus. Let's run. Come on, let's run. Quit walking in our faith, quit standing in our faith, quit sitting in our faith, but let's look unto Jesus and let's run and let's finish well. Let's finish well. Well, let's read the second half of this passage again. Let's talk about the ungodly for a moment. The ungodly are like the chaff which the wind drives away. So when you crack some wheat, you got this leftover husk. It's just, it's gone. It's gone. The ungodly, their life is but a vapor. They're gone. They're gone. Wow. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. What does that mean? They're going to be held accountable for their sin. You know, it's only those that have a relationship with Jesus that are forgiven. These folks are, sadly, they're going to be held accountable for their sin. In fact, you know, that's part of the reason I believe in, in something. It's kind of, you know, not too many people talk about it, but it's a, it's a spiritual mercy killing. 
I see a lot of people in like the music industry or the film industry, they get whatever they want. They do whatever they want. They're sinning, 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 and then poof, they're dead and it's over. And, you know, and in my opinion, you know, and this is my opinion, this isn't the word of God, but I, I do, you know, I think that's probably a mercy killing, you know, because if God is going to hold them in judgment for all their sins, you know, can you imagine if like, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll speak of some bands that I know that Mike and Jeannie would know, but like Jim Morrison from The Doors, you know, dead at an early age, if he would have continued on his pharmacia path, you know, doing all this mind stuff and all the sin that goes along with it, you know, God was going to hold him accountable. So God had to take him out. Jimi Hendrix, same thing. Janis Joplin, same thing. The list goes on and on, you know, actors, oh goodness. Uh, you know, I can't name too many because I'm not much into that, but uh, there are some that just died. So yeah, River Phoenix, I think, you know, just died young, you know, and they're involved in that lifestyle and God knows that uh, they're not going to change. So he's just like, oh, you're done. You're done. I'm going to show my mercy to you by saying no more because you're going to be held in judgment. So we need to remember that. The sinners, uh, you know, the sinners aren't going to be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous. And if you think of that, is that, uh, you know, have we all sinned? Yeah, of course. But the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yeah, right. So if we die in our sin without having that relationship with Jesus Christ, we will die eternally die eternally and and you know what those who still have their sin and their judgment on them they're not going to be able to stand in heaven they're not going to be able to stand in front of a holy god and say yeah i deserve to be here in fact they're all going to go yeah you're right i blew it i didn't have a relationship with jesus i didn't have a relationship with god and i knew better because guess what even creation itself tells people about jesus christ creation itself does that yeah, so these sinners are not going to be able to stand with the righteous. And it says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll be able to stand in judgment. But how many people do we know that are ungodly? They might be good people. You know, Crystal and I, you know, what Crystal's, uh, uh, you know, friends, you know, it's really hard to, to share the gospel with her. And she's known this girl since high school is because she's a good person. She's a good person. And so they think, oh, I'm good. So why would a, a, a loving God, uh, you know, condemn me to hell because I'm good? Well, that's not the way it works because they don't understand God's nature. God is so holy. God is so pure, God is so righteous, that anything that comes through his presence that isn't holy, pure, and righteous like he is, they're obliterated. They're gone. They're gone. That's why we need the blood of Jesus. That's why we need the blood of Jesus. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We have been redeemed, those of us who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We have been bought with a price. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world loves us unconditionally. So that way, all we have to do is just call upon his name. We will be saved. And that, brothers and sisters, that is our message. That We have a message of hope. This world is going to the hell in a handbasket. Come on, let's be honest. You know, a confusion to the left, craziness to the right. You know, just look all around us. It's just like, oh, what? What's going on? But we do know this, that we have hope. And no matter how terrible the storm is outside, no matter how much sin is taking place in the world around us, no matter how much the adversary is out there trying to kill, trying to steal, and try to destroy, we have a relationship with a loving God that promised us an abundant life. A loving God that has promised us an eternal life. And even if Satan tries to mess with us like he did with Job, God's got us. God loves us. God wants what's best for us. And when we look to him, the author and perfecter of our faith, when we look to him to stand and take a stand in faith, take that first step of faith, step out in faith and say, okay, your will be done. 
How do we know it's his will? I mean, that's part of our prayer life. You know, that template prayer, it's not like a magic formula, but if you think about it for a moment, that template prayer that we have, we have hope. We have eternal security. And when we pray to the Lord, he's got us. And though, you know, think, think about it. Yeah, did, did Peter die a horrible death, crucified upside down? You bet. And he's just like, oh, he realized he was not even worthy to be crucified in the same manner of Jesus. That's pretty heavy. You know, the world today would think, you know, Peter was crazy. Yeah, we're going to kill you this way. You know, I want something a little bit more painful, please. Because I'm not worthy to be to suffer like my Lord suffered. Wow. Wow. Peter really did lay down his life. And what does the scripture say? Greater love has no man than this, than a man lays down his life for his friends. So what are some ways that we can lay down our lives? Oh, the big game's on. So uh, you know what? I'm going to uh, just watch it by myself. Or, hey, no, the big game's on. And I know some people out there who don't believe in Jesus. Maybe they can come over and watch the big game with me. We can start a relationship. You know? You know, because really, you know, there's that old cliche. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah. You know, that's what we're doing these, uh, these Thursday nights for, you know, and I'm really excited about what's taking place, you know, uh, that um, we want to give you an opportunity to invite people into your homes and to watch these Zoom calls. I mean, seriously, it all it takes is hooking up a computer to a television. If you need help on how to do that, call tech support. I mean, Crystal, she'll help you out. <laughs> She's over here giggling because she would. If, if that meant that you had five people coming into your home, that uh, some of them might know the Lord and some of them might not, but it encourages them. There's evangelism there. There's edification taking place there. There's the equipping of the saints taking place there. That's what Hear the Watchman is all about. And we want to help you help others so that you too can say, well done, you know, hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, that's why this conference is coming up in October. You know, so that way we can have the training that we need. We can share from each other's experiences because why? Because iron sharpens iron. And we're going to hear some different perspectives on how to deal with spiritual warfare from a biblical point of view. And how all of them are, are biblical. It's in here. It's in here. And so, I mean, yeah, it's a conference. Yeah, we have a good time when we're there. Yeah, the fellowship is great. It's always good to meet everybody face to face. But more importantly, God wants to pour into all of us, myself included, Mike and Jeannie included, Crystal included. God wants to pour himself into us in such a way that we recognize this is a war. We recognize that we're in a spiritual battle. And you know what? We recognize that Satan is after the souls of those who do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's our job to let our light shine, to put on the armor daily to work out our salvation with fear and trembling and to get out there and spread the good news of Jesus. That's what it's all about. So let's run with patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Amen. Amen. Well, Crystal, I'm going to have Crystal come forward and Crystal wants you to pray for us as we prepare to do a closing song and uh, uh, Lord, or actually pray that there's a stirring up of the gifts of those that are out there watching tonight. Oh Lord, we just uh, ask God that you would show us all the gifts that you've given us. There are some that um, have not been used or have not been invested in. And so Lord, I just pray that right now that you would um, speak to the people who are on the call tonight and stir up those gifts in their life so that they can be actively uh, using them to toward the great commission, right? That as we're going through our life, that we are sharing um, who you are and what you've done and making disciples um, to grow the, the body of Christ. And so Lord, just, um, just move in the hearts and minds of the people who are here on the call tonight. Um, show them what it is that you want them to do next. <clears throat>
you this morning. Amen. Amen. Stir in me, stir in me, a fire that the world cannot explain. I come to Passion that my heart cannot contain. I come to worship you. Sing, hold me. Hold me, break me, mold me, and make me more and more like you. I come. Fire that the world cannot explain. I come to worship you. Stir in me a passion that my heart cannot contain. I come to worship you. Sing, hold me. God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you. May God lift up his countenance to you and grant you his peace in the name of Yeshua Jesus. God bless you, everyone. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys. Hey, thank you, Jim and Crystal. You guys rocked it as, as usual. Uh, and I got to tell you guys, you know, Jim and Crystal are amazing parents. I mean, they, they have this gang of kids over there uh, that they take with them almost everywhere they go and uh, and they 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 homeschool their kids uh, Jim like I've seen him do it it's really that easy he says <laughs> he says go do your homework you know and I've seen uh, Dorona uh, sit in the car while Jim's helping Jeannie and I out up at our property and do her homework the whole time so it's it's not an easy job but they do a great job of it 
Uh, so there, we are so blessed to have them with us here at Hear the Watchmen, and uh, every Thursday night doing this, and and uh, all week long, we're doing what Jim and I do. You know, it's been a, it has relieved me of some burden. It's created other burdens, but <laughs> thanks it's... for being honest, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, guys, we'll see you all on Tuesday night where we have uh, Vicki Joy Anderson joining us. She is one of the speakers at the uh, <clears throat> Advanced Spiritual Warfare Conference in Louisville. And I can't urge you enough. Sign up early because this one will sell out. David Heavener's church, where we're holding it out, is not that big. So get yourself lined up. Crystal and I are redoing the entire website on Saturday, and we'll have hotels up there that you can check into, uh, distance from those hotels to the church, uh, and so you can make your own choices. I do want to let you know, there is another airport that you can fly into, and uh, I've got to get it from David, but I think it's called Kentucky International Airport. It's an hour away, uh, but you might want to check ticket prices there versus uh, Louisville. But anyway, we'll, we'll see you all on uh, Tuesday night. Jeannie, you got anything? No, I just hope everybody has a fabulous weekend. Please keep praying for this area and that this massive, nasty fire is extinguished and that our forest is preserved and that we can breathe clean air. We haven't been able to breathe clean air for several weeks. So um, please pray for us. And if anyone has any prayer requests, please email me geniemore777 at gmail.com and send me your prayer request or fat. You can text me if you have my phone number. Just, we always want to know where, how we can pray for y'all. Okay. We love you. You're our family. We can't wait to see you again on Tuesday. So God bless everybody. All right, that wraps it up for tonight, you guys. Uh, you can reach Jim if you have any questions about tonight at uh, Jim, what is the uh, email address? Rabsterproductions at gmail.com. Right, or you can uh, also uh, do rabsterproductions.com and fill out a uh, request form to uh, for me to contact you and we can do that. Awesome. Both awesome. of them work. All right, well, I think that wraps it up, you guys. All Get right, you got signed up for not for uh louisville get get yourself involved i mean look katie bought a ticket i mean you can come out and you can meet katie and and, and it's a miracle <laughs> yeah and let her bend your ear i was i was praying that katie could be there i'm kind of hoping she brings me a john deere t-shirt which i'll pay for uh white but, peter, white peter. Yeah. You know, we're looking forward to all getting together in person again and fellowshipping and learning about spiritual warfare. So that wraps it up. We'll see you guys all on Tuesday night.